chapter 9. Last uh, week, we finished the chapter 8. Chapter 9 and chapter 8, there are similarities between the two. Eh? You are going to study the bitter elimination as well. Okay, last chapter 8, we study about the alkyl halide. This week, we are going to study about the alcohol, ethers, and epoxide. Eh? These are just the introductions of these three uh, important functional groups eh, in uh, organic chemistry. Okay, let's see what is alcohol. Eh? I believe you have already studied about alcohol when you are in your secondary school or even your STPM. Eh? Alcohol, as everyone know, have the functional group of hydroxyl group, eh? R-O-H. Okay, just like what you can see from the slide. Uh, this is uh, alcohol, R-O-H. OH is the functional group, hydroxyl group. Okay, and we are going to study about the ether as well. Eh? Ether is R, O, R. You have two R group, two alkyl group attached to an oxygen. Then we are going to study the epoxide. Epoxide is also one uh, form of ether. The only difference is this is a triangle shape. Okay, triangle shape. This is what we call epoxide. Alcohol contains a hydroxyl group, OH, bonded to an sp3 hybridized alcohol. This is sp3 hybridized alcohol, just like an alkane. Okay, it could also be bonded to sp2 hybridized alcohol, we call it enol. And it could be also be bonded to uh, aromatic compound like benzene, then we call it phenol. Okay, these, three, these are the three types of alcohol, which we will study later. So classification of alcohol is similar to alkyl halide. Okay, you classify it into a primary alcohol which attached to an R group with 2H or secondary alcohol attached to 2R group and 1H or tertiary alcohol attached to 3R group. Okay, trialkyl group and an OH. Okay, this is similar to the alkyl halide. Then we have uh, uh, this one I just mentioned, compounds having a hydroxyl group on a sp2 hybridized com uh, carbon is called enol or phenol. Eh? Phenol if it attached to a benzene ring, undergo different reaction than alcohol. So their so-called chemical properties are different from alcohol. They are more stable or more unstable, which we will study maybe in second year. Okay. Ethers have two alkyl groups bonded to an oxygen atoms. Okay, ether, these are the general mo uh, molecular formula for ether. In this case, if the two alkyl groups are the same, they are called symmetrical ether. Okay, if the two alkyl group in this case is an ethyl group, so these are symmetrical, we call it a symmetrical ether. Or it could be a two different alkyl group. In this case, it's a methyl group and ethyl group. So they are unsymmetrical ether. Okay, it's very simple. The R groups are different. So epoxide are uh, ether. Uh, epoxide, as I mentioned, epoxide is also an ether. Uh, having the oxygen atoms in a three membered ring. Okay, three membered ring. So we always counted the oxygen as one, one, two, three. Eh? When it comes to the nomenclature, the naming, I will show you eh, how uh, the uh, epoxide uh, uh, is named. Okay, the COC bond anchor. I mean, this uh, COC bond anchor for an epoxide must be sixty degree. Okay, that means this is sixty degree. This one, this anchor is sixty degree. Okay, and this anchor also sixty degree. A, consider, a considerable deviation from the tetrahedral bond anchor. Eh? Tetrahedral bond anchor, you have, uh, this is what we call tetrahedral. Okay, this is 109.5. Okay, in this case, the epoxide is 60 degree. Okay, this is also 60 degree. This is a different. Okay. Epoxide have angle strain. Eh? They have angle strain because these are three member ring. Okay, it's very strained and uh, making them more reactive than other ether. I mean, compared to other ether, 
epoxide are more reactive because of the angle strain. Okay, it's unstable, making it unstable. The oxygen atoms in alcohols, ether and epoxide is sp3 hybridized. Eh? I just mentioned these are all sp3 uh, hybridized. The oxygen. Eh? Now we are referring to the oxygen. If you can see here, this is just like a water molecule. In this case, this is R. This is for alcohol. Okay, water molecule is uh, 2H, isn't it? Now this is uh, an R group and an OH group. Okay, you still have two lone pair. This is lone pair here. Lone pair here. Eh? Making it something similar to a tetrahedra, but this is a band shape, isn't it? For the uh, alcohol. And, and uh, this is what we call sp3 hybridized okay sp3 hybridized which you study maybe in uh, the previous uh, chapter alcohol and ether have a band shape yeah? this is what we call a band shape a band shape similar to a water molecule h2o okay and the bond angle around the oxygen atoms in an alcohol or ether is similar to the tetrahedral bond angle of 109.5. In this case, it's 109. Eh? It's very close to the tetrahedral. The band shape is 109. Uh, the water one, how many for water? It's something like 107, isn't it? Eh? 107 or 108. So only one or two uh, degree different. The, o, the CO and OH bond, the CO and OH bond are all polars. Okay, because this is very electronegative, the O is very electronegative, making the CO bond and the OH bond become polar. Okay, mean this is very electronegative atoms, so you will have the so called the electronegative pointing toward this side. Okay, hey, sorry, this is wrong, eh? this is CROH. Okay, okay. Uh, because the O atom is much more electronegative than a carbon or hydrogen. Okay, compared to the carbon and hydrogen, oxygen is more electronegative, making the OH bond and the RO bond electronegative. Okay, polar. Okay, uh, more polar. <coughs> so now we come to nomenclatures of alcohol that mean naming of alcohol how are we going to name an alcohol okay the first step find the longest carbon chain containing the c bonded to oh oh this is cyclohexone now huh? let's see oh, sorry so now you have a oh here okay this is uh, this is the what we call six membrane cyclohexane okay so you count it from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay? So because this is a cyclohexane, so it becomes 3, this one always counted as 1, similar to the naming of alkane, you try to name the, the smallest number possible. If you count it from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, your metal group will be at the 5th position, which is not good, isn't it? So you always make it as the smallest position as possible. In this case, this is 1, 1, 2, 3. So 3 methyl cyclohexanol. You do not need to name 1 anymore because you only have one OH group. And the OH group always attached to the C, which uh, I mean the C that attached to the OH, we always number it as 1. Okay. <coughs> so uh, the second step, as we have just mentioned, when an OH group is bonded to a ring, in this case, the ring is numbered beginning with the OH group. Okay? When the functional group is at C1, the 1 is usually omitted from the name. Like in this case, you, know, you do not need to name 3 methyl cyclo 1 uh, uh, or what we call uh, hexanol. Okay? Because the OH always at the position 1. The ring is then number in the clockwise or counterclockwise fraction to give the next substituent the lowest num number, like this case. Eh? In this case, is counterclockwise. It doesn't matter whether clockwise or counterclockwise, as long as you get the, the smallest numbers for the substituents. 
Okay, in this case, let's see, you have more uh, what we call our Q group. The OH is always 1, you name it C1. In this case, if you count from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that means you have 2, uh, sorry, eh? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, you have uh, 2 and 5. Okay, if you count it from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So you have 3 and 6. So 2 and 5 is always prefer than 3 and 6. In this case, it's also cyclohexanol. And this is a methyl group. And this is an, uh, uh, these are all methyl group. Methyl, methyl. So it's a tri-methyl group. Okay, so 2, comma 5, comma 5, trimethyl cyclohexanol. Okay, so the name for this compound. Okay, the OH group is at C1 position. The second substituent, CH3, gets the lowest number. Eh? In this case, you get 2 and 5. So, in alcohol, we also use common names like ethyl alcohol, propyl alcohol, you know. So, common name has been used before even the IUPAC eh, name standard, uh, make it standardized, okay. So, a few uh, common names are very simple. Uh, name all the carbon atoms of the molecule as a single alkyl group. In this case, you see, these are, if you just look at this part, these are isopropyl, okay. This group are called isopropyl. So it's called isopropyl alcohol. It's very simple. If you have an ethyl group, so you call it ethyl alcohol. Okay? Or you have uh, ethyl alcohol, now we name it ethanol. Isn't it? Or you have a methyl group, you name it methyl alcohol or a methanol. So these are all uh, a common name as well. Actually, uh, ethyl uh, ethanol and methanol uh, they are IUPAC name. Okay, if you name it methyl alcohol, these are common name. Okay. So compounds with two hydroxyl group are called diols, two, eh, two alcohol diol or glycols. Okay. Compound with three hydroxyl group are called triols. Okay, three. Eh? Triol, diol, uh, diol also called glycols or uh, three group is called triol. In this case, in this case, you have just look at the first uh, structure. You have OH here, you have a CH2, you have a CH2, OH. Okay, so according to the IUPAC name, this is an uh, uh, diol, okay, and this is ethane. Is it? Ethane, and if you name it as one or two, it could be either way because they are symmetrical. So the IUPAC name for this compound is called one two ethane diol. Okay, ethane, ethane. You know, it still remain the ethane is the same. One two. Okay, ethane. This ethane is it? Diol. Okay, one two. Ethane, ethane, diol, or it could be named ethylene glycol. Okay, ethylene. This is an ethylene group. This two OH is also called glycol, so it's become ethylene glycol. And this name, after you go, uh, uh, how to say, read a few times, then it will go into your mind. Eh? If the first time you listen it, it, it sounds like unfamiliar. Okay. So how about this one? The second uh, compound, okay, you see how many OH? One OH here, second OH here, a third OH here, okay. So you have triol, triol, but they are attached to, to what? Uh, and propane, you see, and propane here, one, two, three, okay, these are a propane. So they are attached to what position? One position, you have one, this is C2, this is C3. So, one, two, three, propane, triol. Okay, very simple. One, two, three, propane, triol. As we said, it's a 3OH, we also name it triol. But it's also named 
glycerol. Uh, this is a very uh, what we call a common uh, structures in our body, eh? like glycerol. Okay. And how about this one? This is in a cyclopentane group. Eh? This is a cyclopentane group. And in the cyclopentane, as we have studied before, is uh, what we call the bond cannot be twist. So it's possible to have a up and down, which is similar to a alkene. Eh? So it's a trans eh? diol, uh, trans diol in this case trans OH. So it's named trans one two cyclopenta diol. Okay, so very simple. So because this is your first year, and you have this uh, your test one has this over, so test two also is an objective. So you can choose. It's not so difficult. But in the final, you do have subjective question. Yeah? In final exam, this, uh, the, what we call uh, the format, yeah? we will inform you later, okay? when close to the final. If I'm not mistaken, you have 40 objective questions and I um, don't know how many subjective questions, 7 or 5, yeah? you have to answer. answer. <laughs> we will inform you later, yeah? let me check. Okay. Not to worry too much because you still have a few weeks before your final exam. This is just week, week eight, is it? Eh? Okay. Now we come to the naming of ether. Okay, naming of ether. Uh, you can start eh, to do your tutorial or exercise in the book already. Eh? They are not difficult. Okay. Okay. Please keep quiet. So now we come to the nomenclature of ethers. Okay, ethers. Very similar. Similar to alkane. Eh? Not so difficult. A simple ethers are usually assigned a common name. Again, a common name because common names come first before the IUPAC name. To do so, name both alkyl group bonded to the oxygen. Arrange this name alphabetically and add the word ether. So, very simple. In this case, we want to find the which are the alkyl, alkyl group that attach or bonded to the oxygen? Okay, the first group is methyl. See, methyl group. And this is a sac butyl group. A sac butyl group. So, which comes first? We say alphabetical order. Okay, in this case, it's M and B. Eh? S is not counted. Okay, just like in the case of third butyl. You always come counted from. A butyl group, okay. So sac butyl methyl ether, okay. For this, this is symmetrical or unsymmetrical unsymm ether, Unsym uh, symmetrical ether because the two R groups are different, okay. And how about this one? Ethyl group. Both of them are ethyl group. So it's called diethyl ether. Very simple, eh? diethyl ether very common uh, organic solvent that we use in the lab okay diethyl ether so uh, how about more complex ether you can also name it as a using IUPAC system just now what we are showing you is a common name okay just like the alcohol eh? methyl alcohol ethyl alcohol okay in this case one alkyl one alkyl group is named as a hydrocarbon chain and the other name is that and the other is named as part of the substituents to that change okay what does it mean huh? in this case if this is uh, CH3O we name it methoxide uh, methoxy group huh? if it attached to a, a longer change so in methoxy uh, hexane for example okay so and this ethoxy third butoxy and this is a, a five membrane uh, ether is also a very common solvent. We call it tetrahydrofuran. Okay, THF. Okay, so come back to here. The first step is to name the simplest alkyl group as an alkoxy substituent by changing the YL. I mean, either you are methyl, okay, you change it to OXY, become methoxy. Okay. Then the next step is to name the remaining alkyl group as an alkane with the alkoxic group as a substituent 
bonded to this change. For the case of cyclic ether, which have an oxygen atom in the ring, a common uh, this is a common example. We call it tetrahydrofuran. Okay, furan. Okay, now we go to the naming of epoxide. For this, eh, you have to go back and try out the exercise in your book for naming. It's eh, not difficult, you just try. If you need to check the answer, check with Puan Kiru or Jake Nodin or even myself. Eh, we do have the answer. Okay, but you have to go back and try it out. You know, and you can come to our office, we can pass you the answer and you check one by one to make sure your answer is correct. Okay. So for epoxide, eh, epoxide is more uh, a little bit complicated because there are many ways of naming an epoxide. Okay, epoxide can be named in three different ways. Okay, the first one is called epoxy uh, alkane or oxyranes or alkene oxide. Okay, so let's see eh, the example. To name an epoxide as an epoxy alkane, first name the alkane change or ring to which the oxygen atom is attached. In this case, you see, this is an epoxy group. You see, it attached to, to what? Cyclohexane. Okay, it attached to cyclohexane. So, it's called 1, 2, in this case, this is a, we take it as a substituent. Huh? This is 1, 2, epoxy cyclohexane. Okay, one, two, epoxy cyclohexane. This is the first way of naming, eh? taking it as a epoxy alkane. You name the alkane first, name the alkane first, then name it as a uh, uh, what we call epoxy group. How about this one? Let's look at this example. Okay, first we have to identify the al alkane. Okay, identify the alkane. So, which is the alkane? The longest chain hydrocarbon is an the alkane. We start from here. One, two, three. Okay. Is there any other way? If you start from here, one, two, three. Also, you get the same naming. Okay. The metal group is still attached to the C two. Yeah, but your epoxy group is attached to one, two. Okay. If you take it as one, eh, it doesn't become a propane already. Isn't it? You have count from here. One, two, three. This is a propane. Or one, two, three. So this becomes a, a metal group. Okay, so the name of this compound is called one, two, one, two, epoxy. This is epoxy. Two, two metal propane. Okay, can I understand? So how about the third one? Now we are talking about the first way of naming. Eh? Name epoxy as a epoxy alkane. Okay, so the first step is always identify the alkane. Okay. So in this case, let's have a look here. So what is the alkane? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, pentane group, a pentane. Okay, and in this case, it will be two, three. Okay, so 2, 3, epoxy, pentane. And they are in the cis position because you have 2H pointing at the same side. Okay, so it's cis, 2, 3, epoxy, pentane. Okay, they are, in this case, they are, they are in the, above the plane. This is below the plane. Eh? 2 pointing downward. Okay, 2 pointing downward. This is like a, a what we call a, uh, epoxide, eh? uh, a three member ring alkane. Okay. Okay. Any question? If no question, we move uh, forward. Epoxide bonded to a change of carbon atoms can also be named as derivative of oxyrin. Uh, oxyrin. The simplest epoxide have two carbon and one oxygen atom in the rings. This is a, a simplest epoxide. Eh? This compound has a common name called oxyrins. Okay? As I said, the oxygen always named as one. One, two, three, or one, two, three. Okay, in this case, let's see this 
this uh, naming is uh, not commonly used. Eh? Normally, we use the first first naming, but it just this is just an introduction, just an introduction to you, so you 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 know about this. Okay. So the oxygen ring is number to put the oxygen atom at the position one and the first substituent at position two. So let's see. Eh? Pay attention here. If you want to name it as oxygen, O is always at the position one and the immediate substituent eh? the substituent will always put it at the position 2 now you only have 2 in this case the substitu substituent is attached to here That's, this is only H okay so you know that you can these are the dimethyl group 2 2 dimethyl oxyrin okay O as number 1 okay if you uh, you cannot name it 1 2 3 then we become 3 3 dimethyl oxyrin which is not the lowest number okay so we always name the substituents attached to the, the lowest number which is c2 only two possibility one is two one is three unless you have another group attached to here okay ethyl group uh, then you have to maybe switch uh, 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 switch around because this become a two ethyl then three dimethyl okay because the ethyl always come first okay so this is a second way of naming. Eh? Name uh, epoxy as oxyrin. How about the third way of naming? This is the third way. Epoxy are uh, also named as alkene, uh, alkene oxide. Why alkene? Because they are synthesized from ethylene. Eh? Ethylene is an alkene. So you add an O into it, it becomes alkene oxide okay so what you can do is first step mentally replace the epoxy atom with an double bond this is an double bond so now you're thinking that this double bond is replaced with an oxygen atom okay in this case it's called ethylene oxide okay ethylene oxide is also an oxide ring okay but I think it's enough to know the first way and second way of naming yeah? this is um, this can also be used when we come across this you know that this is also refer to an epoxide yeah? ethylene oxide is also an epoxide so all together three ways of naming now after finish the naming we go to the physical properties Eh? What is physical property? What, what are physical properties referred to? Anyone want to try? Hey, this is your you know, first year, although it's first year, but you have studied about physical and chemical properties when you are in your SPM or STPM. Okay? Physical property. Can you give some example of physical properties? Boiling point, melting point, what else? Solubility. Uh, these are the three common ones uh, we always refer to when we are talking about the physical properties for example the boiling point what we normally refer to the intermolecular forces is it intermolecular forces what are the intermolecular forces when there was hydrogen bonding uh, uh, dipole dipole uh, moments okay so, so as you can see, you can also expect we are going to study about this eh, in the physical property. So when we talk about the physical property of alcohol, uh, what is the first thing that comes into your mind? Compared to alcohol and alkane, which one have a higher boiling point? Alcohol. alcohol. Why? Hydrogen bonding. You see, we do not need to have... <laughs> because you have already studied in the even secondary school, eh? hydrogen bonding, alcohol. Okay, so never mind, we just go uh, very quickly. Okay, alcohol, ether, and epoxide exhibit dipole dipole interaction. What is dipole dipole interaction? And what is the factor of dipole dipole interaction? Because of the a polar bond. Huh? Why does it have a polar bond? Because oxygen is very electronegative, eh? we have just mentioned because they have a band structure with two polar bonds okay alcohol are capable of intermolecular hydrogen bonding 
intermolecular mean between two molecules. Okay, dust alcohol are more polar than the ether and, and epoxide. In this case, let's see, this is an alcohol and methanol. What is the factors of hydrogen bonding? Amine and hydrogen bonded to, to what? To oxygen, nitrogen or a foreign. Okay, in this case, it bonded to the lone pair of the oxygen or nitrogen. Okay, so you have a lone pair which can uh, donate their electron, something like donate, eh, or forming a bond with a H. Eh? This is what we call a hydrogen bonding. This makes the alcohol have a higher uh, boiling point. Okay, so the second factor that affects the, the what we call the hydrogen bonding is also something to do with the, I mean, uh, affect the strength of hydrogen bonding. It's also related to uh, steric factor. In this case, you have primary alcohol, secondary alcohol, and tertiary alcohol. So, increased ability to form hydrogen bonding come from 3, 2, 1. Why? Why is this so? Because for tertiary alcohol, you have the steric hindrance. Okay, the alkyl group is more bulky. Okay, so it's the primary alcohol is easier to form the hydrogen bonding. This is, uh, uh, I think, a revision for your STBM level. This is nothing uh, new. Uh, it's supposed to be nothing new for you. Uh. So this is a summary. Let's look at the summary. Boiling point and melting point. Of course, they are related. Uh. Well, boiling point changing from water or liquid to gas. Melting point changing from a solid to a liquid. But what are the similarities between these two? Is the breaking of the intermolecular forces. Okay? So in this case, let's look at the slide. You have uh, what is this? Alkane. This is an alkane. And this one is an ether, ROR, and this is an alcohol. Okay? For an alkane, what are the intermolecular, uh, intermolecular forces? Wonder Wars. Eh? VDW is Wonder Wars. What is Wonder Wars force? What are the uh, causes for Wonder Wars force? Anyone want to try? When two molecules come together, eh, it temporarily polarizes the other molecule. Okay, this is what we call what we meant by Wonder Wars force. Okay, and for ether, you have Van der Waals force and DD. DD is what dipole dipole moment, eh? dipole no, dipole in, interaction, eh? because of the two polar bond. And for alcohol, you have three three type of intermolecular forces. Okay, for an ether, there is no uh, how to say it cannot form hydrogen bonding because there is no OH. Okay, of course it can form maybe hydrogen bonding with uh, a water molecule, for example, uh, but among itself, ether is only ROR, there is no H, cannot form hydrogen bonding. For an alcohol, it's possible to form hydrogen bonding as what we have shown. It's also possible to form Wonder Wars force and also dipole dipole interaction. So, there are three types of intermolecular forces making the alcohol compared to alkane and Ether has the highest boiling point. Eh? That's why from 0, 11 to 97, a big jump eh? of the, uh, in this case, is the boiling point. Okay? Boiling point increase as the extent of hydrogen bonding increase. And just now, we have also discussed the static factor will affect the, the strength of the hydrogen bonding. Okay, so in this case, you have a tertiary alcohol, secondary alcohol, and primary alcohol. Primary alcohol has the highest boiling point for the reason that the tertiary and secondary alcohol have the steric uh, hindrance. Okay, increasing ability to hydrogen bond, increasing boiling point. How about solubility? Solubility, how well it can dissolve in the water. Okay. Alcohol, ethers, and epoxide having uh, carbon less than 5 are water soluble because they each have an oxygen atom 
capable of hydrogen bonding of H2O. Uh, I have just mentioned. For example, just look at the ether. Okay, ROR, uh, CH3, CH3. Okay, you have two lone pair. It's a band shape, very similar to water. And you have a water molecule. And you have a water molecule, also a band shape, H, H. Okay, so this lone, this oxygen from ether can form a hydrogen bonding with water molecule. Okay, that is the reason why uh, they can dis uh, dissolve in water. Okay, they are soluble in water for any uh, carbon less than 5C. Huh? Alcohol, ether and epoxide having more than 5 carbons are H2O insoluble because the non-polar alkyl portion is too large to dissolve in water because if this is too too big uh, if for example CH2, CH2, CH3 okay so this portion the non-polar portion is too big making it unable to soluble in water molecule okay very simple the last one alcohol, ether and epoxide of any size are soluble in organic solvent Okay, no matter how long or how short they are, they are able to uh, dissolve in organic solvent. Okay, so uh, I think we stop here. Eh? We will continue with uh, a tomorrow reaction.